Lines. Welcome back to Fault Lines with Nixon and Stranahan. I am producer Eric Gladney filling in today for Lee Stranahan, and we are joined now by James Corbett, founder of The Corbett Report. James, how are you doing today? I am doing excellent. Thank you for having me on. Well, James, it's 920, so it's early. You haven't been banned from uh, YouTube yet today, have you? Well, Oh, it's uh, late over here. It's 1020 p.m. in Japan, so uh, I made it another day, I guess. Oh, good. Hey, he's ahead of, ahead of us there, huh? <laughs> well, James, you had a couple of uh, great videos out recently, one that I watched um, here the other day entitled Pricking the Filter Bubble. So if you just want to kind of give our audience a, a brief overview of what that video was about. Right, so people have probably heard about this concept of the filter bubble by now, but if not, it's basically this idea that our our perception of the world is increasingly being shaped by these big giant tech companies and specifically the algorithms that they're using to tailor recommended videos or, or news feeds or you should click this next um, and in ways that we can barely even comprehend. And I was in that episode that you're talking about, I was talking about some of the ways that my life has been changed, some in, you know, who cares, you know, what, what music I'm going to listen to or that kind of thing, but some very profoundly important things including really the starting of the Corbett Report website was because back in 2006, I was getting these recommended videos, these conspiracy videos on YouTube, and I was clicking on them kind of with my eyes rolling. Oh, you know, what's this about? And some of the videos were actually really compelling, and it started me down this whole path that ultimately led to the Corbett Report. So our lives are increasingly being shaped by these big tech companies, but in ways we can barely even know about, let alone do anything about. And of course, that's coming with even more relevance today after all of the craziness we're seeing with this, these uh, d uh, different crackdowns that are happening now on the conspiracy theorists and platforms like the Corbett Report. Yeah, the but... irony here, I think, uh, is that, you know, all of the talk about, um, you know, there were, you know, memes of puppies that turned the election and, you know, the, 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 there were there were uh, Facebook pages that ran after the election that, that turned the election and that... You know, the irony is that we see people, in my opinion, who are exactly, you know, it's it, it's like Machiavellian, you know, the, the the prince, where you accuse someone else of doing what you're doing, where it's mm -hmm. obvious to me that they are specifically working to um, interfere with the election, to to, to change the results of an, of the election, the election, doing exactly what they claim that some, you know, nefarious other entity did. But they are like really open about it and they're using some really powerful online tools to do it. Well, I guess I, here I'll just jump in real quick is uh, with the recommended videos. If now you can shut down someone's channel, you can no longer recommend their video on the side and you're not going to see it. Exactly right. There's a lot of information that I would probably never have gotten if I was just starting today um, because of the way that they're changing the, the algorithms and what have you. But I, And you're right that this is, in, in effect, it's a way of trying to manipulate voter opinion and, and manipulate the election, but just in a, different, in a different way this time. But I think it's a much deeper issue than that because we see all of these different threads con coming together and converging on a very, very disturbing trend, which is government censorship of the internet. I think what we're going to see as a result of all of this that's happening right now is a greater call from both Democrats and Republicans, both sides of the aisle, which of course encompasses everyone, right? Because there's no one who's not Democrat or Republican. That's but it. both Except sides me. of the aisle are... <laughs> <laughs> and me, <Hey>, one. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, but bo I think this uh, a lot of people are going to be caught up in the idea. Well, we need the government to step in here because now these big tech companies are censoring this person or censoring that. We need an arbitrator to come in. And guess what? Just last week, the Senate Democrats uh, a, a, a policy proposal was leaked on Axios.com. Um, from Senator Mark Warner that's talking exactly about this and the different policy proposals the Dems are coming up with um, to try to regulate these these platforms, including mandatory location verification for every user of these social media platforms or mandatory identity verification, bot labeling, labeling these, uh, these uh, tech platforms as essential facilities so that they can be uh, regulated in a number of different ways by something like the FTC. Uh, what we're about to see is a huge crackdown on the Internet, and people are going to be clamoring for it. You know, a few years ago, I would have thought, well, people would be resisting this. But now I think people are saying, well, no, I mean, we need this. We need the government to step in. But, of course, when the when the Republicans are in power, the Republicans will be 
happy enough with the way it's running. And when the Democrats are in power, it'll be the Democrats. But of course, in both cases, um, there will be other people who will say, no, it's being turned against us. So I think this is all coming together right now on this issue of censorship of the Internet and which way this knife is going to fall. And I think it's when we get, you know, we use the term now, which is a popular term, the you know, establishment, you know, back from the 60s. It worked then, I guess, <laughs> the establishment. But um, and that is what, you know, what I think we'll see is the, quote, establishment of both parties. Um, both feel threatened by independent media and independent news and independent voices and, and, and independent thinking. And that this is about it. And again, I, I think it's this is whole part of the whole Russiagate thing. And that is Russiagate has sinks. It has its tentacles in a lot of areas. But one of them is here where it is a very powerful attempt to shut down people who are outside of the the mainstream premise. They're happy if you're arguing, if you're saying I'm a Democrat and the Republicans are evil. And if you're saying, hey, look, I'm a Republican and the, and, the, and the Democrats are evil, they're fine with that premise. But when you start questioning, you know, their warmongering, when you start questioning, you know, a 21 trillion dollar deficit, when you start questioning, you know, some of the things that are going on with Wall Street, when you start questioning the pillars of the establishment of establishment politics, then they have a problem with that. And it's to me a war on independent thinking and a war on independence from establishment uh, 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 politicians, and it also shows that they are afraid that people, are, and they're getting aware that people are on to them, and that people are looking for other voices. What are your thoughts? Exactly, exactly right. That's the right lens to be looking at this through. It, of course, it isn't about that bipartisan game that they're playing. It is about the systemic threat to the establishment that is presented by independent voices online that is really like nothing that has has been available before in human history. We have mass communication now that literally someone like me in, in his living room in Japan is broadcasting or podcasting to ultimately over the aggregate millions of people around the world. That is incredible. That is unthinkable in any other era of human history. And that is a threat to the establishment paradigm that has existed through the era of mass media, where it has always been a very few people with the incredible resources to publish a newspaper or own a television station who have controlled political speech. Well, that is, doesn't exist right now. So the, I think they're desperately trying to cram that uh, cork back in the bottle. And Internet censorship is going to be the way that they try to do that. And I think it's ham-fisted, and I think there are always going to be ways around it. But it's a question of whether people have the awareness of that fundamental issue. This is about the... The, the individual, the in, independent voices versus the establishment. It's not about left and right. Yeah, James, and I think um, that someone like yourself, uh, the establishment would view them as a real threat because I find the work that you do can be uh, an inspiration even to other people who are looking to get into journalism or um, video, video editing, video production, just to um, you know see what the individual is really capable of doing and putting out there to you know his fellow man and um, that that can really make a difference in its own. Well, you know, and let me add this, I, uh, 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 James, as an example, you know, I don't watch the, the mainstream me, uh, media hardly at all. On my TV, most of the time, it's a smart TV, so I watch YouTube, and I watch your video or some other videos, and I've had people and friends walk in the house and are like, oh, what TV show is that? Oh, what what is that? A doc? Oh, is, what is that a news? And when they look at your stuff, it's so well done, and yes. some of the other things, they don't know because they're watching it on the TV, the color's great, the video's great, everything's high definition. Well, yeah, here, I'll just say, not only is it well-produced, but what you get with uh, James is you get the the quality commentary, right? right? You get the in-depth, the research that he's done on the side that in these mainstream or even other alternate uh, media places, they're just not going to go some places. They're not going to talk about some things, and, you know, as a result, uh, you get stuck. So, James, um, let, let's go into here uh, something else that you uh, me mentioned, uh, the news hero. Uh, what is the news hero? The news hero is a new Facebook game that's taking the Internet by storm. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Um, this is a propaganda game that's been created by something called the uh, NATO Stratcom Center for Excellence. Which so is not a, exactly... A Facebook propaganda game sounds like a, a great game. <laughs> the, what, the NATO game? The, oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah, we James is going to tell us about it. Yeah. Go. 
I, I, you can't make this stuff up. So I can't play this game because I'm not on Facebook. That is a decision I made many years ago that Aww. I'm very happy about. But uh, I hope someone... Well, actually, I wouldn't recommend anyone out there actually play it. But if someone does, they can maybe tell me in greater detail about the gameplay. But the idea is you become a news editor and you're publishing a newspaper and you have to decide what is fake news stories that's being reported by your freelancers and what are real news stories and you will publish your newspaper you know decide what gets published and not and if you do a good job i guess you get you get monetary okay. rewards and we're and sure that the, the editors of the onion are not behind this project well, you know here's the thing <laughs> and if it's like a lot of video games you know like you can pick who you want to be I'm going to pick Kendallanian, and Delanian. that way I can, like, send my, my all of my stories to, like, a cyber CIA or something. But look, see, here's the problem. I'm going with Acosta because yeah, I it, want some action. Here's yeah. the problem, James. I'm into, like, real, really good, high-quality mainstream media work. So let's let's take a listen. I got a clip here from Rachel. This is actually a oh my God. clip of a little bit of a compilation oh of God. some of Rachel Maddow's finest work. Uh, let's let's, let, let's hear this. Brace yourself. Russia. Russia. Vladimir Putin. Russia. 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 Russia hates Russia. 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 Putin. Russia. 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 Russian. 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 Russia. Russia. Moscow. Moscow. Russia. Russian. Pro Russian. Russian. Russia. Russian. 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 The Russians. Russian. 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 Russians. Russians. Russia. Russian. 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 Russia. Russian. 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 Moscow. Russian. Russian. Russia. Putin. Russian. 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 Against us. Russians. Russians. Russia. Against the U.S. The Russians, Russia, 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 Russian, Russian, the Russian government scheme. The Russians, Vladimir Putin, Russia, Vladimir Putin, Russia, Putin, Putin, and Russia, 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 Russian, Russian, Russia, the Russians, Russian, Russians, Russia, Russia, Russian, Russia, 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 Putin, 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 Putin. There we go. Now, James, let's be honest. Oh How God. are you going to compete with that fine journalism <laughs> right there? <laughs> I, I have to bow down to the master. That's that's wonderful, isn't it? Uh, but it raises the essential question that the whole NATO news hero game is based on. Because you're this editor that's trying to find out what's true and what's fake, and you have to d identify the fake news. And apparently, uh, the way that you do this in the game is by using a fact checker. Oh, my! <laughs> Which essentially means, wow, there we I mean, go. This, Basically, what they're saying is, you know, go to Snopes or the equivalent thereof and find out whether this is true or fake. And that's ultimately what they're trying to teach train the public into is to be good zombies who will listen to the voice of authority whoever that is designated as yeah, this i'm wondering week. who's targeted by this what like age demographic or what ideological I, just kind of i can't oh. imagine who would want to play this no it's i know it's unbelievable well, if you look at it they, <laughs> th th this thing came out like a couple weeks ago and it and, and, and literally it's had like 50 shares so the answer, who would want to pay? <laughs> Nobody, because that's like friends and family members oh, of the man. person who like uh, wrote, invented the software in the first place. Those are like people in the, in the in the office who came up with it. Literally, fifty shares. What do you say to your uh, your cousin when you get the uh, the the share or the send the invite? You know. <laughs> Oh, they're getting thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 exactly. And what we have here is uh, this is the and I think this is the difference. You know, I watch a lot of independent media. And this is what I do. I watch your stuff. I know this is what you do. And here's the difference. The ind independent media says, research for yourself. Research on your own. Find out for yourself. You know what I mean? I always say things, but I say, don't trust me. You know, if you, somebody says, you're a Russian bot. I may be. Don't trust me. Look at look it up your own. I notice I watch your stuff and you point people to different websites and you point people to information and you, you know, you, you're pointing people to things. You're not just saying, shut up and listen to what I have to say. That, this is such an important point, and I think this goes back to what we were saying about the establishment media and the way that it operates. It is uh, essentially trying to dumb, uh, constantly dumb information down. And I think when you present real information to people in a thoughtful way and you say, here are the sources and here is how this information is constructed and please go do the research for yourself, when you trust the audience to be thinking autonomous individuals who can come up with their own ideas and, and make up their own minds – I think people resonate with that because they're so used to being treated like children and zombies that when someone treats them like an adult human being, I think most people, most people are thirsting for that. Well, so we're starting to see the stratification of society between the people who will just accept the, uh, the, the establishment telling them what is true and people who genuinely want to find out what is true. And uh, I think that's the real war for the, the mind that's going on right yeah, now. Just real quickly, I'll say, I think in the media, there's a lot of uh, playing to the lowest common denominator sort of thing. And that's just kind of everyone suffers as a result. And uh, we're going to take a call here. Uh, Jim from South Dakota, you have a comment here about YouTube? Uh, yes, I, 
I've been noticing, you know, for a year or so, I've been, I've been thinking, why aren't there some adventure capitalists out there creating alternatives uh, to YouTube and Google and, and all of Facebook, Twitter, all of those social media sites that, I mean, the, the market is huge. There are people that would flock to that rather than stay on, you know, the current ones because of, uh, like you say, independent thinkers, conservatives, center right, center left. Yeah, J- Jim, I think uh, James has actually done some um, uh, yes. videos um, yes. <laughs> on some of these other platforms. So, James, why don't you give your thoughts on that? Boy, do I have some great news for you. Yes, there are alternatives out there. There are more that are being developed right now. There's more coming online every single day. And the alternatives that are being developed are decentralized and open source platforms that do not ha- share the same centralized methodology, the big corporate giants, the the GooTubes and Twitters and what have you. Uh, the, there are all sorts of things coming up online. Uh, uh, BitChute and DTube and Steemit and all of these types of platforms. I have done a video series called social media alternatives where I've talked about some of these different um, platforms that are already available you can go use them now I use them myself I don't just post to YouTube I do post my work there because that's where a lot of the audience is but I'm also posting to places like BitChute and DTube and and other sites like this it's really an exciting time if you know to start looking start uh, I just want people to realize there are alternatives and we have to start supporting them otherwise these corporations will become the default uh, yeah. controllers so James, of do you information think that's online. important kind of for independent content creators to diversify the platforms that they're putting things out on to make sure that you're Absolutely. getting exposed yes, yes. Yeah. and it's it's not an either or thing. Sometimes people think this means you either post to YouTube or you post to some alternative. No, you can post to, to multiple sites and sure. why not? I think this is the time to be doing that and embracing uh, the don't put all your eggs in one basket philosophy because we know where that leads. It leads to uh, entire rafts of information being censored at, a, at one fell swoop. Yeah, and the thing about it is, I mean, when you look at it now, we all know, you know, for whatever reason, at any given time, YouTube, you know, could wake up on a given Tuesday morning and say, okay, you're a, you know, you're a, you're a Russian bot. I'm shutting you down. Um, people who are out there on YouTube and, and you know, on Facebook, etc., IG, doing live stuff, have to recognize that you got to have a backup because at any day you might be shut down. And right now, if as an example, if Alice Jones was, you know, had a lot of stuff on Steam or one of these other things, you know, it might be a backup option for him. I think one of the things that could also happen is some of the bigger, the Jimmy Doors and the people like you and the Tim Blacks, if they start shutting, you know, if you guys are doing it and saying, I'm also on Steam or also on BitChute and they shut you down, a lot of your people will jump over there. And I think they could kind of start to, you know, kind of open the door uh, you know, open the open the floodgates themselves by shutting down people, provided that you guys are already backing up on these other sites. You're you're right about that. I mean, it could be a good advertising for these alternatives, and, um, and I'm not I'm sure that they do uh, think about that to a certain extent. But I I certainly I'm already making use of these alternatives, so I hope people will start informing themselves of them. And of course, I also post all of my videos and everything directly to my own servers, so that uh, until they take down my website itself, uh, they won't be able to get all of it. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Dad. and so James, that's CorbettReport.com, right? That is the correct. Yes. There we go, James Corbett, CorbettReport.com. A lot of good stuff there. Love that. One of my favorite, one of my favorite uh, uh, YouTube sites. And, and the CorbettReport.com is uh, his website. Go there and watch everything. We'll be right back. One more segment. You're listening to Fault Lines with Nixon and Strand.